Today, the Australian Healthcare and Hospitals Association, along with the Diebel Institute for Health Policy Research, was pleased to have the inaugural John Diebel lecture and panel discussion. And this was really to celebrate the life and contribution of John Diebel to health policy in Australia, most notably, of course, to do with the introduction of Medicare and Medibank. Today we heard from Professor Nigel Edwards, Chief Executive Officer of the Nuffield Trust in the United Kingdom. And he was able to reflect on various attempts at health policy reform in the United Kingdom, the sorts of problems that they encountered, and the kind of lessons that can be learned to try and avoid those implementation issues in the future. Nigel Edwards is CEO of the Nuffield Trust. Nigel was policy director for the NHS Confederate for 11 years and clearly has um, an enormous amount of experience in health and social care. Uh, he has a strong interest in models of care, but as I'm sure his talk will demonstrate, he has a really keen interest on understanding how policy is enacted on the front line. He provides advice to many uh, countries about their health systems, uh, particularly developing countries from Iraq to the Ukraine. So my topic is policy blunders and maybe how to prevent them. Um, even worse is the tendency and temptation to design a policy for the worst bit of the system, um, uh, which means everyone else is held back because of the way the policy is designed. Uh, the poor conceptualisation of policy is also an issue. Um, it's quite common to find logic models in which the boxes and arrows don't really connect in ways that are supported by evidence. There's a, and here a miracle happens, bit of the process uh, which converts the, uh, the, the evidence in, into, uh, into, into outcome. Uh, I mean, policy-making theory recognises the problem of trade-offs between objectives, but uh, we often find that they're created in ways which uh, create uh, multiple objectives. The UK is particularly prone to this. If you look here, these are the objectives for the DRG payment system in England. Um, it's more objectives than any other DRG system in Europe had. They normally had two. Uh, we had all of these. You'll notice that it contains two contradictory obje ob uh, objectives. One is to increase admissions, elective admissions, and the other is to decrease emergency emissions using the same instrument. One long-standing issue in some systems is the division of labour uh, between uh, commissioners and provi uh, providers in the design and implementation of policy. Uh, in England, unlike other countries with a purchase provider split, we've asked commissioners to do uh, a very large amount of the heavy lifting in terms of the detailed design of local implementation and to get overly involved in day-to-day uh, -day issues. In fact, we've had to invest in some extremely good communication staff to help them make that bridge because we all know, and there's good evidence on this, that most policymakers will not read anything. Well, I, that does seem to be, depends which country you're in, but certainly uh, once you're over one page of A4, you're pushing your luck. We then had a panel discussion that was led by Professor Joanna Westbrook from Macquarie University, with panellists comprising of Professor Ian Fraser, best known for developing the HPV vaccine, Gardasil, also the Honourable Nicola Roxon, former Minister for Health and Ageing and Australia's first female Attorney General, and Mr Romley Mokak, an Indigenous Commissioner with the Productivity Commission. They discussed a range of issues reflecting on the history of Medibank and Medicare, but also the kinds of issues that are faced by the health system today and the near future.